So what's going on, everyone? It's Raven. Uh, very excited to be here uh, and to kick off another studio visit episode number four. First time we're doing the live stream here and um, doing video too. So we're, we're pulling out all the bells and whistles today. Uh, I'm here with some good friends of mine, um, Generative Artworks, who, you know, Alex and Steven, who uh, I've been known for a, for a while now and uh, have had a chance to, you know, hang out in person and, and just, you know, they're in the New York area. So I've been able to see them quite a bit over the last couple of years. So super excited. Thanks guys for joining. Um, welcome. Yeah. Happy to be Thank here. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for having me. I was like, let's go. <laughs> let's <do it. laughs> always, always good to, always good to talk. So we'll take any, uh, definitely any invite we can get. Exactly. So generative artwork is just an intro, uh, is, is Alex and Steven. They, um, you know, have been doing generative art for, how many years now it's, has it been? It's my first question. <laughs> Since 2020. 2020, so, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, almost four years now. Yep. So I, I was going to say 2020, but I, I didn't know if it was right. So I didn't want to look like an idiot. So I'm glad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so since 2020, um, you guys were one of my first uh, Art Blocks mints. Uh, you know, I think it was like you or Galaxis or one of those mm -hmm. early factory f projects or maybe Enso. I don't know. It was one of those, like all, you know, all came around at the same time, that magical time, uh, in yeah. early 2021. Um, it was all on the same day within four hours. It was the yeah. launch day of our box factory yes. back in March. Yes. So it was, it was really cool. And, uh, no, so this, so you guys have a special place in my heart with the, you know, as far as my collecting and things like that. So, and, and the thing is, I also want people to know is like you have done, you guys have released, um, a number of projects on art blocks, uh, you know, Epipurean, right. Is that how you pronounce Empyrean. it? Empyrean. Yeah. See, Empyrean. I, I will first... mess up every word because like literally <laughs> I just read these projects names and I never say them out loud. So I, I don't yeah. feel bad. Um, <laughs> don't worry I, I, no one said it correctly in the what three years now the three-year anniversary yeah. was uh three or four days ago actually oh so, wow yeah. that's awesome well yeah. congratulations on that and then uh Icheridian, is that right in Caridian. In Caridian, okay yeah yeah um it's actually a a uh, side note uh um i don't know if you if you guys have have followed the Stoics at all, but like uh, Epictetus has a has a book that's named that. It means manual, right? In Greek, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what it's it's named after uh, because it's uh, the Enchiridion talks about the rejection of the Empyrean. So, oh, wow. it's actually a play on the two projects. Cool, awesome. Um, and then Democracy, D, which was your next yeah. one. And then coalition, but you guys have also done some other projects too, right? On on other platforms, other than yeah. our blocks. Yeah, yeah, mostly on plottables, but also foundation, uh, Doodle Labs, uh, and just like a, a whole bunch of different like our box engine partners. Awesome. Yeah, it's 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 so. Uh, yeah, it's been great to watch you guys develop work. I know that also too that you have uh, one thing I've always. Uh, kind of admire from you guys is that your plotter work i think that's where you started correct uh that's kind of like um a big part of your art is is, is plotting right yeah definitely we didn't start with plotting but we got into plotting pretty early on and it definitely helped to shape the direction of our art since then awesome so we got the intro out of the way. I wanted to just dive in and at first just get a background. Like, I don't even think I know this story and I've, I've seen you guys for, you know, I've known you guys for a while now is one, like, where did you both grow up? I want to just know that of like, maybe you could take turns saying that. And then how did you guys meet? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can start. Like I, I was uh, born and raised in Tampa, Florida uh for 18 years uh then when i went to school i went to school at uh stevens institute of technology in uh hoboken new jersey and that's actually where uh steven and i met but i'll let him 
say where yeah. you're from. <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up in a small town called Clark, New Jersey. Um, it's in Union County, New Jersey, not too far from where Alex and I met at school, about just about a 45 minute drive away. Oh, wow. Yeah, so awesome. I'm, the, I'm the out of towner. <laughs> But yeah, we went to school together there. We're both in computer science. Uh, Steven's one year above me, actually. So, um, but I came with a lot of credits from a different university because I went to did um, kind of my senior year of high school at the University of South Florida. So when I came, I had some credits that were a little above. So I think we had a couple of classes together at, at different points throughout the year, but we were actually in the same uh, like fraternity. And I think that's where we uh, first kind of started talking to each other and from there, we started developing uh, projects, not necessarily generative art projects, but a uh, little like startup, working for different startups, going to the city together for uh, talks about React when React was kind of like brand new. Uh, and then just always kind of, we lived together for a year in 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we always kind of just did little projects together. So generative artworks originally was a project in which we wanted to automate, figure out how to automate an Instagram account. Uh, and so I kind of came to see this like, oh, it'd be cool if we could like figure out how to automate an Instagram account and be this mysterious thing and it'd kind of run on its own and um, do daily posts. And we never really figured out how to automate it because Instagram's APIs are so locked down, but we figured out how to code art and kind of continued with that. And grew up following doing plotter work and uh when reels came out and short form video uh and then at you know one point like when uh crypto was starting to go off again and i've been in crypto since 2017 uh i kind of saw like art blocks it was like wait we kind of do this this would be this is actually really interesting and had a talk with eric uh in february of 2021 and he was like oh we're going to be launching uh this new thing called art blocks factory soon and we'd love to have you as like uh, one of the first on the on the first day there. So that's kind of how we met. And then also a little bit how like we kind of started generative artworks in the first place. That's awesome. It's so funny you mentioned, uh, I was just smiling because um, it's so funny you mentioned Instagram API because like literally that was how I, um, I want to say it was like learn coding. I mean, it was definitely like really early, like when Instagram came out, like, um, I don't know how much coding I've done. It was like very basic stuff up until then, but I actually like, I was the first thing I did was, uh, you know, um, I, I wrote an auto liking bot for Instagram, like when it first came out and I was able to mm -hmm. get like, uh, I don't know, 15,000, 16,000 followers. And I was able to get on the popular page back then and things like that. And I basically hacked it. Like I just like wrote a script that, you know, just this is back when Instagram's API was very much not locked down. And, <laughs> uh, you basically could do, you know, you know, this is before they got bought by Facebook and you could, you could just like, you know, auto like write a script to auto like, like thousands of photos from like, you know, the most popular tags. Um, and then maybe 1% would follow you back. Right. They're like, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like a hack yeah. and just like to get a ton of followers. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was interesting back then too, because, um, yeah, so they, they started to, I think they were like nine people at that point. So they, they didn't have time to, you know, like it really locked down the API, but it's funny that we both have a, uh, a, a story of automating, <laughs> uh, Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, for us, it was like you had to use like Selenium. Uh, I think that's the automation tool for like doing clicks in the browser. Yeah. And then it needs to be on mobile browser. It was like, and it was just like at, at this point, we had enough followers that it was like we didn't want to risk like nuking our whole account to like an automation tool. Yeah. Um, so we just kind of like, we'll just grow this like making daily posts every day. And you know, we did that for what, three years, Steven? Yeah something uh, a little bit longer than that we were we were over a thousand posts by the time we stopped the dailies yeah i think so a thousand, somewhere around that we stopped at a thousand exactly <laughs> that's a good milestone so yeah like one two whatever that's awesome and and i'm curious like when so so you got you got you guys got together were you both doing art like separately at this point or were you just you know kind of doing more technology like what got you guys into art did you guys do art when you were younger or was it an older something older that you developed i'm curious on that 
Yeah, so I I was never really too into visual art before sort of learning about generative art. Um, I think this probably goes for Alex as well, but we, I, I think we were both creative in other ways. Like I have a background as a musician, um, mostly just as a hobbyist, but I've been doing it my whole life. Um, and just like, I've always enjoyed creating things just for the sake of creating things. Um, so in, when, when Alex brought up the idea of generative art and one of the first things we did was like this little sunset animation um, and just like seeing that I could create something in this new medium was like, I was instantly drawn to it. It was uh, like, I was always really interested in architecture. Like that was my first like passion. I was, and I was kind of like in between like, oh, do I want to be an architect or do I want to go into computer science? And I ultimately decided like, okay, I actually have more like interest in computer science. I'd like the ability to like build this, these things and build these applications that people can interact with. And I can really do that on my own versus, you know, with architecture, you need to, you know, get millions and millions and millions of dollars of funding to like build buildings. Um, and so what would generate Bart actually unlocked and, you know, you can kind of see that in democracy and in Caridian and uh, to some degree like coalition is like this ability to kind of take that passion for architecture and these architectural elements and then use code something else that like you know we know and we understand to kind of bring that together and um you know showcase that so that it was kind of a merit like the it married the uh it, like a lot of our stuff marries a lot of our uh like, passions and outside interests together that's awesome and I think it, what's cool about that is that you guys came together, you, you started to make work together. Um, and did you, I guess, when did NFTs come to your mind? So I was the first one to kind of figure, we'll, we'll like find them. So like I was in crypto in 2017, like kind of saw crypto kitties, didn't really under, I was still in college at the time studying like, uh, bachelor's in computer science and master's in software engineering, but I didn't really get it. I was like, okay, it's a cool little thing. But then also gas at that point was pretty high. I was like, I really don't want, and I, you know, I didn't have many pennies to my name in college. So it's not like I was going to be like, oh, I'm buying like $200 like crypto kitties and like trying to do this breeding and whatever that was. <laughs> um, so I did like, after that, it kind of left my mind and I was starting uh, my career. And then I kind of heard it, like my friend messaged me in like 2020 uh, during DeFi summer is like, oh, are you, have you been uh, following this? And I was like, eh, like, not really. Like, I, I like crypto, but like, I haven't really been that, like, there's too much else to really understand. But I kind of like went on, uh, like NFTs also started kind of coming into uh, like tech, more tech circles. Uh, people were talking about it more. So I kind of lo started looking into it and went on to OpenSea and was kind of browsing around there. And I think I'm like, they used to have this thing that was just like featured tokens or something. Like it was like individual tokens were shown there uh, on the homepage. And there was uh, a, like a few Chromie squiggles there. And I'm like, oh, like that's interesting. Like it's the same thing, but different. I click in there, like go to the website thing and it pops up and it's like, um art blocks the home for generative art on the blockchain and i was like wait that's like what we do like we're generative we're at this point the instagram <laughs> we had idea. about <laughs> <laughs> like at this point we had about like ten thousand followers and um on instagram and we've been talking about like how do like we want to create physical goods which is kind of what we do now to some degree like physical goods that are one of one of X, uh, specifically with t-shirts was always like what we thought would be really unique, like the ability for someone to like have a t-shirt that's unique, uh, but it's also part of a larger series. So seeing this, we are like, wait, this solves the problem we've been having of like, how do we mass produce unique t-shirts? Uh, because like, you just kind of are able to sell it digitally in like kind of a native form because we've had so many problems explaining generative art to people, people thought we were Photoshopping it. Like they were just like, oh, it's nice. You have like a couple different versions of it, but like, it's impossible on Instagram to really explain like, this is code uh, and this is how it kind of functions. So what, at that point we found NFTs and like I said, set up that meeting with Eric and kind of uh, figured it out from there. Yeah, it's it's tough to um, explain generative art, you know, and, and uh, you know, 
get people to get it. I think we still all struggle with that. Of Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's the, e the easy part of what I have to explain now when all of a sudden I'm like, oh, and then there's NFTs involved. And then also <laughs> like, especially like with NFTs attached to physical goods and it becomes a whole nother explanation. And yeah. I'm just like, dude, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, too exactly. Much um, so yeah, so the, then you found, you f found art blocks, you know, well, you didn't find, you kind of were asked to participate in art blocks, which is really cool. Um, and you know, one of those, you guys were one of the first factory projects that came mm -hmm. out there. Um, and you guys were just, you know, have, have really developed a, a, a big fan base over, you know, 2021. And, you know, it's kind of, I, I was around at that time, obviously, and just the, the magic and, uh, you know, the discord and just the community was, was, uh, it was funny, you know, like, it, you know, the beginning of 2021 was very different than obviously when it got crazy. Right. And, um, you know, it's been actually nice sometimes now, even that it has not as crazy to kind of get back to where, you know, um, it's not as much pressure, right. As it was during, you know, um, that whole pump, you know, <laughs> of late 2021. So, yeah, it's been a moment to like step back and really like refine and our interests as well as understand like what we're uh, passionate about in the space. And it's been interesting to watch the space involved in in general. And a lot of our pieces are in some ways like commentary on the generative art space in the crypto ecosystem. So it's been interesting to apply those thoughts in, in our work and and also kind of in some ways put our uh, money where our mouth is because we can't write well and like hire writers to write <laughs> articles to like try to explain what the hell we're trying to talk about so um, yeah that's i wanted to show your you know you just mentioned your work i just wanted to to kind of screen share for a second and show some of these works because i think they're great um this was your first release you know on art blocks that i was talking about this is one of my uh this is i think my first mint or you know one of them um mm -hmm. And I just think it's such a great, uh, <laughs> I really like one thing I thought always thought was interesting is like only some of them are animated, correct? Yeah. Like, that's right. like that's something that I don't know many projects that have done that, right? Like that, you know, you have a subset that are animated and then, and then, you know, some are static or most are most static. Is that what it is? Yeah, most are static and the I think it's like a 5% rarity are like animated. So in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a uh, like Pokemon cards. Like, yeah, you, you, you like pop one open. And it's like, oh, I got like the animated yeah. rare, like with all these different outfit. things. And I like I really love like I love these early projects. It, like I, it was definitely more. Like, like archetypes, for example, you have the cubes and you have the corners. Like it was more common yeah. in those early projects to kind of, I think it's like that hobbyist era and people really kind of experimenting where it's, yeah. they really wanted to lean in and, and kind of explore this like medium in a way where it's like, it's fun, it's interactive, it's people are minting, not because like, it, it, it kind of changed after Tyler Hobbs' article where Tyler Hobbs' article is like, oh, every output has to be as compelling as every yeah. other output. Like. The whole series has I mean, to be well, like the term the top, long form generative art didn't exist before the article, you know, like yeah. it, he yes. I am pretty sure he made it up like uh, I think he did. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's just the whole space change. Well, it, it's like it's like, you know, generative art NFTs pre Fidenza versus post Fidenza is like, you know, it's it's insane. It's like it was a completely yeah, different world. That, I knew it day. changed overnight when that happened. Yeah, like like twenty seven bit digital, for example. If you remember that one, uh, that one's the one by Kai, where it's uh, a like a, a yeah. I'm gonna bring it up right display. now. Yeah, yeah. There you, yeah. There you go. Yep. There, there. So, like this piece, for example, was like very early on, and the community was would re like loved it, not because like every output's compelling. But because it's like you buy it, you interact with the contract and you get a piece of art piece back. Yeah, it was just novel. Uh, the whole thing was novel, you know, at that point. Like just the, that, oh, I, I go to a, a site and I feel like to most people, you know, like that that haven't really collected generative art yet. Like I feel like that's where I feel our next, um, you know, I've just been waiting for, you know, 
it to really expand beyond the people that are currently the collectors. I think we've been stuck in this kind of just the same people for a while now where the same collector. And I really am looking forward to this, this whole thing, like people discovering this, right? Maybe in a completely different way because it's the technology needs to have a better UX and things like that. And, and we're kind of early adopters and we kind of can deal with the bad UX. Um, but I really think there's just something here that it, to be discovered on like a, I still, I still believe that like that, um, on a mass market, you know, general audience type thing. Right. Um, it's just, you know, getting there, but I still think it's still magical like that you interact with something. And then even like what you guys were doing before NFTs, right? Like you were, um, posting on Instagram and, and doing that, right? Like just the whole, uh, thing of, of generative art where, okay, I write a, a piece of code and then, um, it's going to generate all these outputs. And like, you're, you're almost as a collector, part of a community almost by collecting that series. Right. And you have your individual one, but you're part of this larger whole, right. Of all these yeah. different mm-hmm. outputs. Like this one, people yeah. were just excited when they got like a letter or a number or like a smiley face. Exactly. Like, the, they, the bar if, was if you got low. one that didn't look <laughs> like anything, like you didn't really care. You were just like, oh, well, like a cool, like I love that the series like has these and then maybe I'll collect some that do look like letters or whatever. And then, uh, you know, Kai yeah. created a little ecosystem of like glass and, and things like that with. Uh, no, 100%. With, 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 and like. like you know, uh, you know, um, yeah, I was pixel look glass. Up. Yeah, like pixel glass. Yeah. The other one. And this one. Yeah, yeah. If you had that one and the other one, you could redeem it for uh, like a glass. I remember print. that. That was really cool. That was like <laughs> the first physical redemption I, I heard of. Um, yeah. And like you see this one, like it's not like it's a <laughs> yeah. log form piece. It's just like, look, everyone is pretty much a gradient, exactly. a random gradient. And it's like the story it's telling is, I, like I miss, like I call it like the hobbyist era of generative yeah. art. It's it like pre like the Fidenza article, and um, I think there's something very compelling about that. And Galaxis is another classic released on the same day. I know this one. I was just like, and I remember it was a little bit more expensive, so I was like, oh, I don't know if I could mm-hmm. do like I think it was like point two or something at that time. It's like should I spend spend point two or whatever it was. <laughs> Uh, yeah but... it, it, yeah it was up there and for that time like our our release Imperium was 0. 0.06 see it yeah. so like right. we yeah. we priced it in a way where it's like oh like you can own multiple and it, it's about like collecting in some way it's like dots you know it's like exactly a bunch and then like you have you have like a little grid and you go like here's my little collection of uh of Imperians. Yeah, it's really cool. And I think, it, like, can't you enter? Do you know the key command? But I know that you should be able to enter the plane. P? Like, was it P? P? Nope. <laughs> Damn. Man. Maybe it says the other thing. Now, now we're... Oh, it's oh, because it's, in... oh, because it's... Oh, because it's... I'm in... Uh... Oh, you need to go into... I probably need to go to the generator. There we go. Yeah, it's P? <laughs> it's P, yeah. Yeah! I remember <laughs> three years later. Let's go. So yeah, that's a little hidden early art blocks uh, alpha here that you can go in the plane. <laughs> yeah, that's the you know old discord. I yeah, I think these projects are overlooked in a lot of ways just because they are so old and maybe some of the artists aren't as active as they used to be. Yeah, but I think like the pre yeah, the, it's just cool. I think like I just still I love this project still. Like uh, you know, I, I love these early projects too. Like there's just something very it's not serious it's fun it's you know it's not trying to be like anything it's not like it's just trying to be f- what it is you know yeah and, and yeah. that's to some degree what you're saying like people posting on instagram it's this through line of like you're posting on instagram it's it's a lot of it's this community of mostly artists talking to each other in the comments or on dms and uh like the gen art slack for, for example and and no one's really doing this for a job. Like there's maybe like, yeah, that's, well, that's how it was in the beginning. The right. Year. Is, is it, that's what it felt like. It was, it was, no one was, everyone was there just to kind of hang out and, and enjoy this stuff and be like, Oh wow, this is cool. Like I'll buy one of these or something. It's, it's, you know, a hundred bucks or 200 bucks, whatever it was. Um, 
And exactly. Yeah, it was interesting how it, you know, it's a- so they, you see that kind of go where it's like they pull a lot of their hobbyist code and that hobbyist mentality onto art blocks in the early days. And then Tyler yeah. Hobbs, who was also part of that community, comes in, who is, you know, backed by a lot of other artists in terms of like they they read his articles and really understood his work. And so when he releases Fidenza, people, um, artists push it like kind of say like, this is yeah. good generative art. Like this person is someone that I look up to, someone that I follow. And so then collectors who at that point were looking for uh, a narrative to really understand um, generative art and be like, why do I find this compelling? Uh, attach to that article and then use that to explain generative art to other people. So that's why you see that as like the most widespread narrative and why you've actually seen a lot of um, death of other, um, I guess, lines of generative art and ways of exploring generative art, because this is the the narrative that is most compelling to the largest uh, audience. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, I just remember when I saw Fidenza, I was like, okay, this is definitely like, <laughs> we're going to another level here, um, mm-hmm. it, you know, at the time, because it was, um, I mean, Ringers was, was great too. Like, you know, that, mm-hmm. that came, obviously, Dimitri released that before this, but um this was like this is the first I, I was like well ringers too but you knew like it felt like okay this is like fine art you know it's not like people having fun and and uh just doing hobby stuff like you know it's like okay someone really is thinking deeply about this you know like <laughs> yeah I, like i have a lot of respect for like tyler hobbs and his work and everything i remember when i looked at fidenza it, this is like the old art block site where it only, only showed like one output i didn't really yeah. like uh, output number zero and i was like i'm gonna sit this one out yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i love like 99 percent of the outputs it's just number zero i just wasn't crazy yes yeah, so you sat it like, out I, yeah, because yeah, we yeah. both did. Oh wow, we, both sat, we did. Yeah, yeah. Not because it's also a little out. more expensive <laughs> for the time. Like I think it was yeah. priced at like point one seven. It was point one five, but with gas, I think I, I paid point one nine. I remember like with mm-hmm. with gas. So yeah, it was um, it was yeah, it was it was, and it didn't sell out right away. It took it took. 30 minutes people surprised it wasn't 30 minutes actually maybe it was 30 minutes you're right mm-hmm. yeah it was about yeah I, I thought it was like another day but it was it was like 30 minutes but it, it took like a whole week before or at least half a week before it even went above like started really moving you know till yeah. uh bona fide han you know just completely just started deploying so, capital viable. like we never saw in art blocks before um and you know that was insane like just i know you guys were in the discord on that time and we're like this guy is insane he's crazy he just dropped two hundred thousand dollars on a bunch of pixels like what is going on like (laughs) yep clearly this guy is insane like (laughs) yeah just like guys and then (laughs) so yeah so it's 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 great that you guys are on and that we can chat about this because i think like you know, these early days of art blocks where uh, is a important moment that uh, I think um, I don't know. I just wish it would be captured. Like, I'm glad we're talking about it because it, it was a special moment in time. And like uh, um, it definitely had a different a certain vibes from it, you know, different uh, artists that some some of them are not even around anymore um, and things like that. And some really cool projects that, um, you know, uh, just have a different feel to them. Um, um, yeah, but like you were uh, one of the saying. earliest people like in that in the art blocks discord like it's funny because it's like people like the bachman who are like really old heads now like i remember yeah. when it's like i thought of him as like oh yeah that's like the new guy like he, yeah. he's like in the discord all the time but like he's still like relatively new yeah like, <laughs> yeah it's it's like, funny yeah, but um, those are the old heads yeah so it's 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 cool uh but yeah it, it's definitely interesting like like because i it's funny like you know it just it has evolved like so much like i remember when i released moments i was like you know it felt novel to be doing something skeuomorphic like and i thought that like and and i remember maddie released brush pops like right before that and i was Mm -hmm. like oh wow like what like and we didn't even like talk or anything like so we just came to that Mm -hmm. idea similar at the same time but um at that time to do something schemorphic felt like really novel and i was like oh wow i'm doing something really new um 
And then, you know, you've just seen since then, like you look at William upon and, and, uh, uh, MP cause and just like they just blow my stuff out of the water they're doing it like hyper realistic like like you know paint uh dig, you know generative paint and it's like insane um, yeah with shaders and yeah with shaders like, and everything like that so it's it's really interesting how the space evolves and things like that but it's cool to go back to the beginning and see the origins of this and this is just the origins of art blocks is you know we can go before that to instagram like you're saying if you guys were posting on there and part of that community and um where you know before the nft and in, in art box came into play right yep exactly like dimitri's uh ascii art and all that stuff <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh cool all right i want to jump back and uh i want to just maybe talk about we'll, we'll jump back to you guys and um i just wanted to talk about kind of uh physicals i know that's something that you guys are really interested in and even before you know you did your nft work you were saying that you were you know interested in that or at least thinking of that right um Mm -hmm. what what is what uh and and i by the way i own one of the cells t-shirts they're awesome um you should have wore it for this interview i know i know i I know fail on my (laughs) part i really should have uh but yeah no the one i have is awesome um i could probably pull that up let me show while we're talking about it because i think that's it's probably here right oh there we go yeah yeah so um yeah these cells t-shirts tell me about this project because this this was really cool sure um well so like alex said before we've been wanting to make physical goods like since the very beginning our original idea was to do one of one of x t-shirts and we just couldn't figure out the api integrations with the print on demand services and we didn't have the capital to get production equipment yet at that point so we kind of put it on the back burner for a while and then eventually we got back into it and we've been we've been experimenting with different physical stuff for a while like plots and prints but then we finally decided to invest in sublimation um sublimation printing so it's actually the equipment is we have the sublimation printer here and the heat press right here um so it's it's actually like a pretty simple process but we had to go through a bunch of like early prototyping to get like the times and temperatures correct for the heat press Hmm. tested a bunch of different blanks and everything and then actually one of the reasons we went with cells is because there's no um consistent border like there's no square border or rectangular border on them yeah so it actually makes it easier to heat press without getting um like extra lines around it like oh, wow. artifacts from the pressing process um so it was just that and then part of the reason why we we went with that piece for this shirt collection was just like all the different colors like we we wanted to test the the just production method and see if it could accurately represent the colors that we were seeing on the screen and like what we expected to see in the physical form um so we decided to just keep it like a small collection i think we did 32 shirts with some some proofs that we gave out to people to wear um around morpha and different events stuff like that but we ended up combining sublimation with embroidery um i guess sort of I'm getting away from that, but we, we've also been doing embroidery for a while. I have the embroidery machine behind me as well. And we wanted to do embroidered shirts, but there's different physical limitations of that and things like that. So we decided the best route was to go with sublimation and combine it with embroidery for the patches, which yeah. show your addition number for the shirt. Um, so that, that took some extra iterations too. We did iron on patches that started falling off, different things like that. Um, so overall, it was like super fun. I ended up, uh, I have all the equipment here because I, I just have the space in this room. So I ended up working, I don't know, probably like 60 to 80 hours for two weeks straight, just like making sure it's over and over because I was so new to it that I kept messing things up. I have a whole pile of shirts over there of like failed prints or the embroidery was too puckered or something like that. Oh, wow. So huge learning process, super fun. I think I would, we would, we would probably have to do it a little bit differently if we were to do it again. 
spread it out a little bit more instead of trying to do all the production so quickly. Um, but yeah. yeah, it was super cool. Yeah. Like the idea being like, and there's no NFT attached to these or anything. Like the yeah. idea was like, we want to do like a generative, like streetwear, you know, shirt drop that it's like around the same price that you would pay for like maybe a more premium like band t-shirt or something like that. Yeah. I think it was like, what, 40 bucks? Yeah. With shipping included in the US? It was, uh, you had to pay for shipping if you bought one. If you bought more than one, it was included, I think. Yeah, something like that. And then, so, like, and it's, like, you know, being able to hold up two shirts and being, like, this one's mass-produced and this one's, like, unique, I think the hypothesis being, like, if you do that, like, and they're the same price, like, people are going to pick the unique one every single time. So, yeah. in some way, we wanted to show, it's, like, yeah, it's possible to, like, manufacture these things that, because when you see it in the, in the crypto space, like, it, it with, like, 9DCC, or uh, like the squiggle sweaters, like these type of things that they'll premium price them. They'll premium price those things at like six hundred dollars. Yeah, and it's like at that point, like why would I buy this? So like I can go get a shirt custom manufactured. Yeah, I could get like a nice jacket custom manufactured exactly. for like six hundred, seven hundred dollars. So I think what generative art really enables is this ability to mass produce unique goods. Like yeah. you have the rise of. Um, you know, the industrial revolution, then you have the art and crafts movement, like rejecting that, but still that was like at a high premium price that like is inaccessible. Then it's like generative art re enables that conversation because then you can bring the price down of these unique, like manufactured goods to a mass production level. So it sits in between like, you know, that high fashion and, um, and mass produced shirts so i yeah. like i think that's where we see it really working versus in the crypto space a lot of people are like oh because it's generative art it's it's this high priced uh good yeah i yeah. can I, I i agree with you guys like you know a hundred percent thousand percent i think like generative art i see especially if we want to engage with the you know more general population right of, of people that are not generative art collectors now and things like that I don't think it's a premium thing. I think it's something that we have the ability to do it on a massive scale, right? And keep the cost lower, but it still has that, like you did exactly what you said. It still has that one of one feature of that. It actually feels like, okay, this is my, my unique output, right? My unique version of this. But, you know, if someone was designing it, you know, individually, you would never be able to get that cost that way. Right. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. you know, because you'd have to like spend the time to do it, you know, of each individual output, but because we can leverage the economies of scale, you know, it's, it's, it opens up this opportunity to do this stuff on like a massive level. And I feel like that, I, I don't know, like, I feel like no one's done this yet in just, clothing or anything. And I think it's like a really cool idea. Like to, I think people would really want to have their own version of their clothing. Right. If it was mm -hmm. around the same price, like, I don't know. Yeah. And it's still designed it would, by an artist or a designer or something like that. Right. Yeah. And, and we've done that like at, with other stuff as well. Like we sold little generative, like succulent pots at like the, the closing of the bright moments gallery in New York city. Um, I have a bigger one for my plant, which next time Steven's, Steven talks, I'll run into the other room and, and grab it. Uh, but and as well as like just other little 3D printed, like anything you can 3D print and just we have way too much machinery. Like I, we've, I have like a little jet, like a tattoo, temporary tattoo like machine. It's just yeah, we've you guys bought every equipment we could possibly get our hands on and have explored yeah. like seven or eight different like ways of manufacturing t-shirts and talk to distributors and manufacturers yeah. to really it's not like once you get there it's like not just about the art it's like you have to understand all the manufacturing things i too. know and yeah it's it's super interesting to see like how other artists approach that and other people interested in generating manufacturing because everyone has their different uh yeah. philosophy uh, across these things. I'm definitely interested in it. I am, uh, you know, I did the prints and stuff like that. I still, I like manufactured my own prints and, and things like that. Uh, for piece of me, I, I had a claim for every one of those and I've been doing, you know, I really enjoyed the process of like just learning how to, you know, get an Epson printer and try to like, you know, look at hand paper and 
do a bunch of like figure out what how what how you actually make a good print right um mm -hmm. so that's yeah. really Martha, great. Uh, middle of nowhere oh no middle, middle of somewhere. somewhere yeah with brett uh yeah yeah where i got i got my little like print out oh yeah uh, yeah yeah yep exactly and with, then, then yeah. And, yeah and that project i love doing that because uh brett and i you know obviously brett shot it on film which uh you know uh i actually have have now like i've done a lot of film stuff i've developed my own film you know just similar to you guys you know i just dive into like you know as it, it like as soon as they like start something like most people would probably be like just be like like you know on surface level or just like start slow i like dive into like the deepest depth of the hobby mm -hmm. or whatever it is and try to figure it out <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, you know, uh, what we wanted to do was, you know, Brett was shot those on film and then we combine them with, uh, you know, um, I can bring that up just visually, but, um, yeah, bring mine up number 34. <laughs> uh, I think I can go here and go, yeah. And just do, um, yeah, we can bring up 34, but yeah, the one thing about this project was that um, with because Brett shot the the um, let's get live view open. There we go. Yeah. Because because uh, Brett shot the the actual like photo on film, um, and then I kind of took it took that photo, scanned it in, um, and uh, you know did some alpha layers and stuff like that in Photoshop, and then use kind of art blocks engine flex to like load in the photo on I from IPFS and then do like on chain generative code for like the rest, um, you know, and, and kind of combine those two together. Well, we thought like, okay, what does the prints look like for this? And it's like, okay, like we can actually like go back to film by doing a Polaroid cause they have the Polaroid lab that you can, mm -hmm. you know, will basically just take a picture of your phone uh, screen, like a screenshot and then put it in a Polaroid. So he thought that was like really cool because mm -hmm. then you have like, it's back to film again. And also it just has its own character too, which is kind of interesting. I like that part about um, just, uh, so I, I like something about where, you know, the if you're gonna pair a physical and like an NFT, there is something nice about how they, if they're like a little different or something, or they have a different feel to them. So they're not the exact same. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. I've evolved my thinking on that, but I'm more, um, I mean, it's always different, right? Anytime you, you, I mean, you take a digital piece and print it right now, you have a physical representation of the digital piece, right? It's not the same piece. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, for example, like, uh, be, this is our, like the earliest thing we have, but like, this is a, an old Democracy 3D print oh, before wow, awesome. Democracy release. So Democracy used to be in a format that you could then 3D print it. Um, so that's that originally, but uh, in terms of performance for the digital, to, uh, in order to get the performance high enough to be able to display digitally, we had to make it so you couldn't uh, print it, uh, 3D print it. So. It was never able to be 3D printed, but we do have these prototypes from very early on. That was that's awesome. And that project, I'm glad you brought it up because that was a really cool project. And I, I thought that like that was something that was just so um it kind of was different from what you guys were working on, you know? Like it was it, it just it still is different than kind of um uh what you what you have worked on in the past, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. Was, yeah, like that one was like 3JS. It, it was kind of like a culmination of a lot of things. Like I've always wanted to do like a city generation project. And uh, this was kind of like our you know way to kind of be able to do that. Uh, and it was kind of the first one on Artblocks. And a lot of people kind of explored it later and did it later. But um, it we really kind of went very hard on this one. And and yeah. it's kind of two generative pro art projects in one to some degree like the wet there's the weather system and the cloud system which is all generative and has its own uh way of working and, and rain and uh kind of like uh, and like even just ice like some are iced over some are frozen uh some are flooded like and then others are you know sunny days afternoon 
and then there's the city generation, which is a completely different system. And so getting those two systems to play together nicely um, was super interesting and, you know, had a lot of edge cases to begin with, but we kind of like, tamed it down. But it still has a lot of chaos in there, which we really like about generative art is, is leaving some of that chaos in there. Like this one, for example, you see this whole quadrant is just like really destroyed and mangled to some degree, which I think it's like, most people would be like, oh, it should have like a lot of pattern and form because yeah. then that'll make it more compelling to the eye. But I think with generative art really um, operating over the whole output space and exploring the whole output space because of the ability of the algorithm to do that is very compelling. Yeah. Uh, and I think us. that's something that, um, you know, I've thought about more just in general, that something that you've captured in this work for sure is like, it's nice when you do generative art, especially for people that don't know generative art. I think like for people that know generative art, maybe it doesn't matter as much, but like this, for example, um, it makes it obvious that it's done in code or something because like, like no one is like, it's, it's fun when you like make a, a, a piece of an output that like, it's like obvious that no one like place these ones one by one right mm -hmm. <laughs> or it'd be like impossible to do like like doing things that i guess are would be impossible or like you would think they would be impossible right by doing it by hand maybe helps people understand that okay these are generated with code or something like that right yeah like leading into that aesthetic to some degree is is interesting like i think there is something nice about that generative art aesthetic and what you can capture and create with a you know a computer and make it look like a computer created it, or at least because a lot of people try to get away from that aesthetic, yeah. like um, with the skeuomorphism, which you do, which I think is fantastic. But I think some people are very scared of that aesthetic. And because of that, they're like, oh, I need to very much make mine look like paint. And it has to look like paint in every single one of my piece, pieces. Like, yeah, is that, but I, and I think some people have like a bad taste in their mouth or collectors are like, oh yeah, I, re I really want it to look like paint. And because it, it looks high art, you know, and if it doesn't yeah, look high art. It's a bridge, art, then... right? From to like, yeah. Yeah. I think, but I agree. Like, I think that the problem with the skeuomorphic stuff and like what in my work, I even think of it as like, is like, it's not obvious that it's generated with code, right? It's like mm -hmm. someone could just go on Photoshop and use some brush tool and like, you know, just like do a brush. And it's like, you want to know the difference. You'd be like, okay, <laughs> well, someone's, you know, just did that. It's some nice color selection, but you know, some, I can do that with my iPad app and like, you know, a second it's like, unless people really are understand that, okay, wow. Like you, you can't just do that. You like, I'm actually using line functions and stuff to like actually try to simulate what a, what a paint looks like. Right. In code. Like, and that's not that easy to do. Um, then it's like, okay, I think then people can get it. But, um, you know, to the most people that just look at it, they're like, okay, I can do that in like paint or like Photoshop, you know, yeah. like with some brush tool. And this was also like more in the era of like, if you remember crypto voxels, yep. uh, exactly, like that, yeah. that like metaverse, like it's mm -hmm. in, in some degrees, like in that aesthetic where it's like very blocky, very, um, you know, digital and, and created that way. So I think it like, in some ways it's symbolized, like crypto in that era that kind of has that like, aesthetic to me well i knew like we were early, gonna get back there and stuff yeah like i knew we were gonna get back there um in art blocks you know just following our blocks that we went to the skeuomorphic phase and then everything was like very skeuomorphic and then i remember like maybe last year or whenever it came out like harvest i remember around that time i was like okay this is there's gonna be something a skeuomorphic like break wasn't that a project name or something uh from from uh uh, from this trend, right? Because things can happen in trends, you know, like, like anything. Right. Uh, and you know, even on art blocks, you know, there's been trends in art blocks. And I think like, um, I knew that once the harvest came out, I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, and then, and then, uh, cargo and then, some, and then memories of digital data, which is another project. I feel like memories of digital data is way underrated. I, I love that project. Um, but, yeah, I agree that like there is something very compelling about this stuff where it's it feels very uh, to the medium, to to digital art, you know, to generative art, even even crypto art. Right. Um, and it's not trying to be something else. It's like embracing that medium and actually doing things that, you know, in this case, you couldn't do with, you know, um, 
like anything else, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's awesome. Um, that's that's great. And like, what do you think about uh, like you guys do a lot of plotter work and things like that? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what do you think about plotters? Like, what's um, what do you think that's like special about a plotter versus like a printer or something like that? Like printing work versus plotting work. Ooh, it's a good question. It's <laughs> it's really hard to put the appeal of pen plotters into words. Yeah. Because from an out, outside perspective, it is like, well, why why wouldn't I just print that? Like, I have a I have my HP printer at home with you know, um, that can print that in in ten seconds instead of spending three hours plotting it. You know. Yeah. But it it, it has a different feeling and like especially being on the creation side of it, like it's more of an intimate experience. Like you're designing these layers in a specific way and you're letting the code make changes to them in a way that's out of your control. So all, the balance of those two things just makes it such a personal experience to plot something. Um, I, I think it definitely feels like you're more involved in the creation process, which is something we loved plottables when it first came out it was like that was like the first time that we saw um an effort to bring creators in uh, sorry collectors into the creation process um so I, I think that's probably just like the appeal to me is like you're you're in it you're the one doing it even though it's a robot doing it for you you're the one creating it when you use a plotter yeah and like there's also the like texture aspects and you can kind of really capture a different yeah a piece of it and it has its own limitations and uh rule sets that were like eventually like our work really fit that those rule sets and you kind of see that in, in period um there was a lot of kind of work in the early days of art blocks where you're confused how it was done just because like all our work was plotter work yeah yeah and with that you have a lot of limitations and in, in a specific tool set that you can utilize so these other artists were like, oh, I'm using like X, Y, Z. And we're like, what the, <laughs> I've never used X, Y, Z, at least for, yeah. um, you know, since we started, because we quickly transitioned to more of that plotter work. So in our later work, when we kind of uh, had, did more without plotters, then we kind of learned a lot of new strategies and, and techniques because of that. Yeah. But I also want to quickly show is like, here's the bigger plant that I was talking about. So this oh, is awesome. a 3D printed generative pot for like a, like five inches across for like a larger plant. And I really love it because it, when it captures the light, like these like very hard angles, yeah. uh, will have very hard shadows on them. And it's a very, it's just probably my, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite um, design items in the house. So I get, I show it off any, any, uh, time i can and is that done just with a 3d regular 3d printer or are you need a special one or uh this 3d printer right here so okay is it in pieces and then you put it together or is it just no all one piece no way that's crazy yes the bed i think it's like a 10 inch by 10 inch bed see that's another thing that that's one thing i haven't got into is 3d printing and i feel like you know that's another rabbit hole that would sink you know weeks of my time months of my time probably but in, i probably enjoy yeah. every minute of it <laughs> yeah it was it's a whole it was a whole thing to figure out and i kind of have my strategy now and i can get like these different design items and stuff but um i think i have a whole bunch of different terrain generation and things like that but people didn't like that as much on instagram when we were like doing instagram like people like the plotter they're like ah oh, 3d printer We've seen that. We've seen that. <laughs> yeah. So I really love this. That's uh, really cool. I really love that. That's awesome. The the I think the the plotter is really. I mean, there's definitely a difference between plot. When you look at a something that's plotted versus something that's printed, it's it's definitely different. Like you, it, it's yeah. higher fidelity to actually get a, a full line on there than um, it just feels like different. Like it's sharper, you know, um, yeah. than a print. Yeah, agreed for sure, which is really yeah. cool. So what I so I wanted to ask you guys next, like, um, you know, what's the future hold for generative artworks? What what are you guys working on now? And, uh, you know, what are you thinking of? Mm. I think uh, for me right now, the, the most exciting thing, which will hopefully be coming in the near future is 
a different type of shirt manufacturing process, which I, I don't know, Alex, can I say what it is? We haven't actually said anything publicly yet. I don't want to leak any alpha. So don't, <laughs> don't, don't, we, are live. we should have talked about this before. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. So something we'll, we'll leave it at something manufacturing something, you know, there, yeah. Different shirt manufacturing method combining yeah. all our different, experience <laughs> yeah yeah as as far as i know it's it it's not really a technique that exists yet that's which, awesome like being first or last whatever i'm just excited to show it to other people i i'm really proud of it i think it's going to be super fun so hopefully soon um we need to do some fine tuning on that and then we'll probably do another shirt collection this year i hope awesome <laughs> Yeah, we should talk about that because I definitely I'm interested in doing something for dots and I've been trying to think of how to execute it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we did I did the composites. But what I really want to do is I want to have a way to, for collectors to pass in their dots to mint a shirt, you know, and actually have mm -hmm. those dots go onto a shirt or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some piece of clothing. And like, I think in that case, it probably wouldn't be able to be burned. It probably locked the dots up in the in the contract if you make a shirt. Um, mm -hmm. Unless maybe you mail me back the shirt and then I'll I'll free the dots. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, like you that. know. But you know, that's this whole thing with dots. I'm trying to do is like, you know, I I want to allow people to collect these dots and they're really, um, I, I like, you know them as a whole, you know, just individually, I really like the art, but I, I want them to be used into kind of be passed into these other experiences. So I think like a, like generative clothing would be something that I think would be really cool and people could choose which dots they wanted to pass into mm -hmm. that would end up on their shirt or, or something like that. Or maybe, or maybe there's just a version that they don't have to go through all the hoops and they just buy one, but it comes with dots or something like that. So mm -hmm. I think there's really interesting, you know, stuff when the generative clothing, route that's just like i definitely want to explore and just in just prints in general like just getting like figuring out ways to get more people involved yeah we've talked a little bit about like helping other artists like since we already bought the machines and stuff so like yeah definitely reach out and talk to us and yeah. maybe we can figure something out definitely yeah i'm 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 all about it so i think that's that's really cool and i think like you know all that stuff is just like um like the physicals, like you guys were so ahead of the trend on that stuff. Like, but I feel like it's starting now where like people are really th starting to think about it more because yeah. I think people just see that it's like, you know, it makes sense. Like that's how it's going to, we're going to be able to, um, I think onboard more people to this whole space and things like that is like, yeah. it, mm -hmm. it's just, we need to like get things more into retail and, and things like that and have some like web three optional element of it that like people don't have to engage with. And they feel like, you know, they, they like basically the value, they, they get enough value from the, just the item, right. It's, it's a good quality and like, it's a good design and stuff like that. But maybe there is like, I don't know if it's IYK or someone else that's going to like have a chip in it that you, you know, um, you scan it and then basically you claim the NFT of that. Or if it's just, you know, maybe it's not an NFT, maybe it's just like, it, it's like the art version of that, right? Like, I think more of that. I, I don't really, I'm not like a huge fan of like uh, 3D modeled shirts uh, as the NFT. Like, that's not yeah. like my, uh, like my favorite thing. I think like, if anything, I would make it so that you could claim like the art that's on the shirt as its own piece, right? That's how I think about it. But um, yeah, I know people yeah. think about it differently. I like that too, but I think some people are like to collect things just for the sake of collecting things. Like it's exciting just to know that they have that one and nobody else does, or just to know that their collection grew by one that day. Yeah. Yeah. Like our, like our, the way we've kind of approached generative art is, is maybe to some degrees different than others. Uh, our generative manufacturing is different than others in terms of we are very much in the mindset of like, okay, what does this add to the manufacturing process in terms of time and money and, and cost? And so the IYK stuff, as, as interesting as it is, the like idea of like a mainnet NFT attached with like yeah. this specific card that has to be loaded and it, it raises costs. Like, and if you're, yeah. if we're talking like 
ten dollars or like fifteen dollars a gas to bit the NFT, and then on top of that, like yeah, and it's also like manufacturing that, inserting that into the process, right? If you're trying to do anything at scale, that's hard to do, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I think I think it's you guys have done. You know, I think it's like doing it yourself and kind of like what you guys would sell. That's that's okay. Then you could do it that way. But if you're trying to really like level this up, right? Like it's um you can't manufacturing is really hard. I think you guys know. And like, you know, you, you have to systematize and find vendors that can like put that chip in there. And like, that's going to add a lot of cost. Right. And then also yeah. it's like, you know, then do people have to be careful of like, you know, throwing in the wash and, and things like that. Right. So yeah. It's, when you have a $600 shirt that is DTG, DTG printed and you put it through the wash, the thing's going to start cracking after. Yeah. Um, at, in a year, um, or less. So like if people are spending $600 a shirt and the thing cracks, like that's not a high quality good. It might be uniquely manufactured, but you're, yeah. you're mixing different qualities of, uh, manufacturing. Into yeah. I thought like that, like that thing, like, you know, I think what Snowfro and in, in 9DCC did like for iteration two in Miami with that shirt, I thought it was really good, but I think like, yeah, again, like, like it's, I think it's, again, the shirt wasn't that great a quality. And like, you know, I think it was just like a really rough version of what it could be. Right. But it still mm -hmm. like was good as far as the concept, but I think, you know, it could be a lot better than that. Right. As far as like the quality of it and how, how it's executed, I think. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, I think like someone's got to start it. Like yeah. someone's got to do that. And I think what they did was really amazing there. Like, I don't want to knock them for it. It's just, it's when you're, it's interesting to think about and really understand and then see where from there, you can really understand where the guardrails of these different methods are. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think too, like the, I just am curious too, like of, of, you know, the big brands, like if they, if they would be interested in like this generative stuff, like it really is on demand, like clothing, it just hasn't been really done. And I, I think it's, I'm not sure. Do you think it's it's because of just the the trick of manufacturing these like of uh, on demand like that or like having so many different versions of it? Or is, do you think it's just that it's just they haven't really like it's heard the, the idea or have the demand for it? It's the method. So screen printing is the way you would do like a high quality like T-shirt like it is. The problem is like you met, you have to manufacture the screens before you make the, the yeah. print. And so those screens, the screen setup cost is like, let's say like 50 bucks for a run of like, you know, let's say a hundred shirts. But if you have to set up the screens every time, not only is that a time and a manual effort by someone like, then that's a $50 screen setup cost for every shirt. Um, so it's going to slow down production and increase costs exponentially. So then you get into DTG, but DTG, when you talk to these manufacturing guys, DTG is really used for prototypes. Um, yeah. You see it used in Printful and these other services uh, for like, you know, you make a t-shirt for your like friend's like wedding or whatever. Um, but they're not meant to be like, it, it's it's very, the machines cost about 10 to $12,000. So that's why we haven't done it. Like that's the other like viable method, but like they will start cracking after 50 washes. Yeah. Sublimation is the other method, which will last forever and it won't fade. Like this is this is a generative shirt that we did uh, with like an unre unreleased um, piece, but that like that'll last forever. But then there's a caveat that it has to be done on uh, polyester. And the less polyester it has in the shirt, the more faded it is. Yeah. Um, so sublimation is kind of like the best, and sublimation can be done on mugs and anything that. Can have this type of coating so you it, sublimation can actually be done on a, an absolute ton of different goods um mm -hmm. like we've done coasters even like <laughs> yeah. like neo gen space monkeys but that's kind of like the the problems is it, it, if you're doing setup every time for a sublimation print like these these places aren't used to it and don't know how to do it um we've had talks with different manufacturers that would be able to pull it off but it's you know like it there's just there's pros and cons to every different method so it's, it's a matter of um, if there's even like a new way of doing it with like plant-based ink or something where you could really get um, a high quality thing on a cotton shirt. Like and that would be the unlock would be like a high quality ink on a cotton shirt that does not crack or, or fade. Yeah, exactly. And even like, you know, and I'm thinking beyond shirts and stuff like that. Like, 
I, I wonder if you could do like embroidery like like generatively like that or it'd be it'd be kind of hard right mm -hmm. like i don't know how again that, that the thing like yeah. i don't it seems like you guys have done a much more research on this than <clears throat> i have of like how they actually manufacture like you know these kind of clothing and stuff right like yeah at scale mm -hmm. so em yeah embroidery is good but it also has this other side of it where it's like now you have the code affecting the quality of the garment and yeah. especially when you add randomness to that code where the things like laying like thousands of stitches across this piece and in in embroidery it's like if you like you know collide too many stitches or whatever you're going to blow up that like you're going to have a what we call like a dud rate where it's like a percentage of the garments that are either of too low quality or start breaking needles of the machine because mm -hmm. the machine yeah. can't like pin that many points onto one spot so then you have to pull that complexity into the code and so then the code gets a lot, a lot more complex so you go from being able to use like algorithms like we have that we've already made that are like these digital ones to going like you need to make these algorithms and these algorithms need to be created over the course of like a year or you know multiple years and so like you're losing the ability then it's like you're now paying a programmer for a year two years to like do this and so then the price of the garment goes back up yeah so it it's it's interesting how the different methods ultimately yeah and i can't i can't i can't imagine part. like i don't know how they would do embroidery like at a massive scale too. Cause like I could see totally like just printing things on a shirt or anything like that. You know, they just like send them through mm -hmm. a big machine. They probably have like a huge machine to do that. But like embroidery, it seems to me like that would be kind of hard to do like um, at scale, but there's probably some way to do it. I mean, yeah, there's houses weird. that can do it. Like the big thing is like swapping the design in. And then if there's a dud rate on the design, then the, the company has to work around it or redigitize like that piece because like imagine you buy an nft and you're like i want the physical of that and yeah. then you go to buy the physical and then the artist or the manufacturer says oh actually you have a dud we can't produce your output like yeah that kind of feels kind of shitty and then it's on chain so it's not like i go like here's your another one like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think it, personally i think like it, like when we start to bring physicals in i almost i prefer it to be the other way around almost like i at least on for onboarding people like i think you know you buy a um you know you buy the physical and then have some optional like i said before component of okay there's some way to you know like either claim something or you know like onboard people and i think like you know like apps like floor you know chris and christine over there like they're doing some great stuff uh just with you know onboarding people and making it really easy they just announced their wallet that's going to be built in i can't wait for that because like you know like um i'm just like you know people there's so many people like i know that would love to just spend 10 bucks and buy a dot but like they don't know anything about um you know crypto. what three crypto like a wallet anything like that you know i'm really looking forward to that because then you know i'll even be able to give them as gifts really easily hopefully and just be able to send them a dot and it will automatically create all they do is download the floor app right and it will make the wallet for them and and they have it in there and they don't have to like do anything else with it right like i think mm -hmm. like that is when i think things start to get um to a place where it's uh, a lot more people can be brought in to understand, you know, NFTs and generative art and, and things like that. And, and we can create like claim experiences and stuff like that, that are, um, that are much more organic and don't, don't require like so much techno technology knowledge and like time to like set up all this stuff and things like that. So yeah, I think that's what's needed. Right if we're going to bring it to like more people. So yeah, I think so too. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I think like we had a great conversation. I'm, I can't wait to have you guys back on again. I feel like we could have, you know, chatted about, you know, a bunch of other stuff, but uh, we'll have you, I'll have you back on for sure. Uh, thanks for, yeah. for joining. And, you know, I'll definitely be looking out for what you got next and uh, we'll chat about, we'll just keep chatting about the, the clothing and stuff like that. Cause I find that like, so yeah. is so interesting. Yeah. Until next time. I think we covered a lot of stuff from like pre art blocks, generative art to like early days of art blocks to like generative manufacturing and 
So yeah. I think a, a lot of different topics in here is nice to kind of go through all that in, in such a quick fashion. Uh, <laughs> like until yeah, until next time. Definitely. All right, Stephen, yeah. Alex, take care. Sweet. Bye, uh, bye, thanks everyone. for having thanks us. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.